Hello again and welcome to the Boundary Line. We are back at Boundary Park ahead of what feels now like it's going to be the run-in. Six big home games still to go. Eight in total as Oldham chase promotion as champions from Betfred League One. Episode five then of the Boundary Line, a boardroom special featuring our managing director uh, and our chairman, Mr Bill Quinn and Mike Ford with us. Uh, thanks for your time, first of all. Um, it's great being here. Uh, first and foremost, the pitch is absolutely <laughs> glorious. The players saying last week they could have played snooker on it. Uh, how are you both, first of all? Mike? How, how, how have things been the last few weeks? Busy. Busy is crazy busy, which is a good thing. Um, as you know, the Guinness World Record were launched a couple of weeks back and um, we're, we're deep into that, organising that for, for, for the event in May 25. And, and, you know, everything else that goes to the day-to-day -day running of the club... Um, disciplinaries and new signings and dealing with injuries and you know dealing with sponsors so yeah I think it's it's good to be busy it's good to be busy and um, things think things are looking looking well at the moment how are you Mr Quinn very well thank you at the moment yeah are you yes. sharing that workload is are you busy too oh yeah very busy I mean it's non-stop it's every day it's evenings it's it's just a lot of hard work you know at the end of the day 12 months has gone by so fast. Yeah. It's been unbelievable, really. Um, but when there's so much to do and it's, it's non-stop, those days just seem to go by in the weeks and the months. So, yeah, it's been great so far. And uh, as Mike said, we're in a good position. And, you know, uh, we're just looking forward now to the next eight games and seeing where we end up. If you hear a bit of fizz in the background, by the way, <laughs> the sprinklers, perfect timing. Oh, just firing up around. I don't think we're... I think we're safe, guys. I think we're <laughs> safe just for the moment, but that's what you can hear. The groundsman. <laughs> yeah, uh, coming on. Uh, hey, hopefully that's not on purpose, <laughs> but we'll look into that. Um, so that's the how are we. Where are we then is, is the second question. Mike, on and off the pitch, where do you think we are? Mike's... Um, Bill said in the blink of an eye that year has gone. Yeah. So where, where do you think we are? Well, I'll, I'll describe where I think we are on the pitch and Bill can... Okay describe off the pitch really but um, on the pitch we're in a good position uh, the, you know we we're the championships in our own hands um, we know that you know anytime we're not on it and we've seen it already anytime we're quiet and got our enthusiasm right and our hunger that it'd be difficult to win games um, so we, we you know the wake-up call at Keith Lane, back-to-back games with North Wales Crusaders, who we've got this weekend, is you know we were fortunate in that second game. Um, Keith Lee beat us easily in the first one, so we know that people are out to take our scalps and scalps, and but it's in our hands, and, that, and that's the, the greatest, I think, um, pleasure that I've got out of it is that if we do things right, we should be okay. I think. The squad is in a healthy position. We've got Jordan Turner coming back from injury. More Aguero's back from injury. Um, Are they fit now and ready to go, or almost? Most definitely fit. I mean, I think Jordan's just got to get through this week, but he's there or thereabouts. Um, and they're know, two huge players. Yeah, yeah, and you know, a bit of news for, for the fans on Mackenzie Year, who's had a difficult time since he came, which we knew. You know, we signed him with a little bit of an injury. He's. He's had some good news regarding his knee and you should be expecting him to play in the next two or three weeks and certainly before the end of the season. So he's a big plus for us and uh, we've got a new signing. Uh, we've signed Kieran Dixon um, from, from Widnes who, who released him her, earlier last week and uh, he comes with a great pedigree of playing Super League and for London Broncos and, and Hull Kiar and you know, he can play full-back uh, and, and wing, of course, got very, very, very good leg speed, and um, you know the added bonus of be able to kick goals. So he, he throw him to, into the pot. Um, you know, I, it's difficult for Sean. I think this yeah. this weekend is going to be really difficult, which is a good position for him. You know, Jamie Ellis, as well, is getting back there. I'm not too sure if he's going to make it this weekend, but you know, he, it's it's looking good. It's looking good at this time of year. We'll come back to the recruitment and re retention because it's a really interesting time of year uh, for that. But the, the Kieran Dixon news just uh, in black and white. So it's a deal for this year and next year. It's an 18 month, 18 month. Yeah, 18 month. Uh, he starts training tonight. Uh, we registered him this morning. Um, I mean, he'll certainly pick 
you know, the current players we've got, the eyes will pick up that this club's never going to stop in trying to get better. That's how we're just, we debrief everything. I mean, Bill debrief everything and see what we can do to get better. And certainly, you know, recruitment never stops. So on the pitch, things pretty much where we want to be, as, as Mike points out, in our own hands, a couple of big games, Bill, to go against a Keithley side, as, as Mike underlines, who, who beat us fairly convincingly at, at Cougar Bark in a boisterous atmosphere as it was down there. Off the pitch, I don't know what you anticipated in terms of progress um, and where we might be now, but, but where are we in relation to what you might have expected? We're, I've said it before, we're ahead. I mean, when we took the club over, the club wasn't flat, the club was in a hole. And we've dug ourselves out of that hole, we've worked very hard, you know, we've brought in people like Kieran, we've commercially tried to do everything. Um, and we, we said from day one that without the fans, commercially and every other which way, you just can't do it. So we've tried to engage to, to, to put incentives in I think place. that sprinkler's coming your way, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> to put incentives in place to make some match day experience better. Um, we've obviously upped the crowds, but we'd, leak, we'd, lo we'd love to see a lot more because financially it makes it better. We've just come through the worst sort of time of the year for us in the fact that we've just played the last two months more or less away from home so we've had no sort of income yeah, how but, challenging has that been yeah it's been fairly challenging i, w I won't uh, deny it but at the end of the day we're very lucky compared to <laughs> <laughs> let's pretend that last bit never <laughs> happens um i won't need another shower later where were we uh, bill how <laughs> talk about how challenging things can be perfectly il illustrated but that period when we weren't here, we were a lot drier for a start. But um, from a boardroom perspective, without that income of, of bums on seats here, how, how challenging a period was that? Well, it, it's very difficult in the respect that you have no income coming in. Um, but we've worked hard commercially to make sure and to plan for these situations. And that's what we are trying to do from now on, is to plan for these situations. And um, yeah, we're fine. We're OK. What we need now is, you know, if you, if you really want to know, you look at the situation of another six home games, you know, we're there or thereabouts, challenging for the championship, and we need as many fans as possible. You know, we need to basically, you know, get right behind the lads and really push this. And that helps financially, it helps with the atmosphere, it helps with everything. So, you know, we're hoping that we've put the, we've put the last couple of months behind us now and we're marching to the end. I don't think we're completely out of danger with these sprinklers, by the way, but uh, uh, let's hope we are. We'll come back to the match day experience in a while. If, if you've not yet been this season to Boundary Park for a Ruffians home game, firstly, what you're doing, it's absolutely uh, brilliant. But secondly, now is the time to do it. It's for the running. Six uh, home games in very quick succession. A, a brilliant experience, live music, um, pre-match entertainment, and then some of the best rugby league to watch, most exciting rugby league outside of Super League, in my opinion. Uh, as well. Uh, we'll come on to North Wales uh, where we want to right a few wrongs. Uh, but let's pick up on just a few things there. Uh, recruitment uh, and retention. Great news, first of all, injury wise. Mackenzie, yay, because it's been hanging in the balance. I've seen a lot of Mackenzie at training in recent weeks, Mike. He's so frustrated, bless him. He just wants to play. He just wants to be, be out there. So that is, that is fantastic news if in the next few weeks we can get him out. Jordan Turner back, Sean Long said to me quite a few times, it's like getting new players in yeah. um, when, you, when you get these players back, the likes of Wardle. And Mo, lest we forget, yeah. you bring in someone like Kieran Dixon, we've got Mo who was absolutely flying, wasn't he, at the start of the year. And then on the other wing, we've got a lad who came to you and said, Mike, can I come on trial and prove myself for nothing? And suddenly he's the top try scorer in any of the top three divisions. I mean, what a fantastic position to be in. Yeah, he's, he's done really well, Kieran, and he's got a super strength of beating the first defender every time. Um, and the way he gets out of tricky situations when there's a try needed to be scored is, is quite remarkable. So my, my hat off to him. Um, a great example of uh, a, a player backing himself, yeah. but also because when you back yourself, you, you're more hungry. And when he's, he's even in pre-season, I remember Sean saying to me, this kid's, this kid's electric, you know. So he's done very, very well. So that's great. And he, he's... The conundrum on the wing now and, and at fullback because we've got PLT there, as you know, on loan from OKR, it is it's a great one for Sean. He can go in many different ways, different style of football if you want, from 
you know, fast and agility to a bit of more power and stuff. I mean, you've got to be, remember Mackenzie Turner and Jack Johnson have played on the wing to, you know, very well as well this season. So we're, we've got plenty of riches there. And at this point in the year, and I know you're both involved in conversations and, and, and Sean Long as well about about the squad for next year. How, how tricky a period is that? Because you, you're basically planning, hopefully, for one division. But, you know, as, a, as an MD, as a coach, as a chairman, you've almost got to be making a plan A and a plan B, haven't you, in terms of who you're bringing in, the right quality. I mean, I, I'm guessing we're all planning for being in the championship, right? But it's assembling the best of what we have at the moment, is it not? You'll tell me better than this, with the calibre of player for the right price bill as well, which is where you come in, yeah. and getting that done before the end of a season that's still going on. Yeah, I, look, I've I've done this for years and years in rugby union, the recruitment part. You you can't stop. You yeah. can never ever stop, and you've got to be as early as possible because you miss out. So you, in some ways, you've got to back yourself of what you're going to do. You know, at the beginning of the season, what where you think you'll be at the end in terms of the squad you recruit, and with, you know, obviously within them discussions is is our chairman here. Uh, you know, the backing of that, um, the support of that. Plan A, if you like, um, is is, is got to be one hundred percent. So, you know, we thank Bill for that. We, you know, because he's been un he's been unwavering in his support for the club, and without him, we couldn't do it. So it enables me, uh, and I'm not on my own in recruitment. Obviously, there's Sean there, there's Bill there. I'm not doing this on my own, um, but it, it it takes every every one of us to be aligned. Um, with with the uh, with the strategy and so recruitment for next year is nearly enough finished, right. nearly enough finished. So we've got some plen plenty of exciting uh, signings to announce co in the coming future. And how much of an input and how, and how exciting, Bill, is is this kind of thing for you? Because I guess it must be exciting, kind of planning and putting a team together that we hope can win stuff. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, we we have got, as Mike said, you know, Plan A, and that's what we're heading towards. Um, but plan A basically consists of this club going forward, whether it's in this division or the championship. So the, the, the plan is the championship and the plan is to, you know, um, do as best we can in the championship. We're not looking to, um, you know, take a backward step, basically. So the recruitment, obviously, um, has been to identify the players that uh, Mike and Sean feel are the best you know, uh, that will fit that sort of criteria and then we discuss it, we work on it and uh, we, we take the next step. And there's plenty more to this project than what we're discussing at the moment, which is success on the pitch. Uh, it's something that you, you two have spoken about with such passion since, you know, the, the few months I've been on board with this as well. It's, it's all the other stuff. It's the development. Um, it's developing Melrose, where uh, it's going to be the home, the training base now. And it's also the pathways and the community and actually one of one of the news stories the positive news stories that got some of the most engagements of the of the content we've been putting out online was the story we did last week about the nine under 18 lads who've been given the opportunity to train and that really struck me what this is all about because the, the positive feedback we got on that story from yeah from every platform that it, it went on was absolutely it was beautiful to see yeah. everyone you know, pounding the badge, saying this is what we want. This is one of the best stories I've I've seen in rugby league this week, and that's a huge part of what you guys are trying to do. Yeah, to re, you know, the vision was to reconnect with the town, and in that's a massive the pathway, which is our number one criteria, um, is the kids the kids in the town, you know, not just playing for Oldham, but also supporting Oldham and bringing getting new audience, getting new bums on the seats, bringing the mums and dads. Um, the pathway is used for that and we, we've had under 11s to 16s and we decided now we're going to get an under 17s uh, before next September. So that we're, we're, you know, we've got a team now all the way through to the 18s and this story was uh, one where uh, Ma uh, Marcus Gian, dad Paul Gian, yep. came to me and said look there's, there's a few lads here being poached by other clubs the Bradfords, the Uddersfields, the Leeds, the Warringtons, but they want to play for Oldham. I mean, get them together. Let's, let's, let's get them in a room because it's a little bit like my story where I wanted to play for Oldham and I didn't get that opportunity. Do you know what I mean? So I went to Wigan and these kids want to play for Oldham. So I, listen, we can work it out. I spoke to Bill, I spoke to Sean, 
can we do this? Can we get them in? Can we get them training with the first team? You know, give them that exposure, give them a strength and conditioning plan, a nutrition plan, a skills programs plan. And then we, look at the end till the end of the season. You know, they're only going to train with us once a week because they're still playing for their amateur clubs. But hopefully, we'll improve them and they'll go back to the clubs better. But also, we might actually sign a couple mm. for next year. They're, you know, but I just wanted to give them a taste. Uh, a couple of lads. Um, Marcus Geener and, and Sam Littler have, have been with us for a while now and we've exposed them to travelling on the on, to away games, we've exposed them to the change rooms before and after and during a game, you know, the bench and stuff. So we, we're trying to make it better and, you know, um, if we can fast track the kids, if we can fast track the kids, that'll put the foundation even stronger for this club. How much pride builders this kind of thing fill you with? One of the one of the first things when I started uh, hosting on the home games in the fan bar that, that struck me was when fans came up to me and said there are there are young kids in here wearing Oldham tops we haven't we haven't seen that for years. Mm. How much pride do you feel as, as chairman of this? Well, I, this club? I was here in two thousand and seven to two thousand and and nine, and I just remember there was virtually no kids really there was just you know the odd kid here and there mm. and to see now the kids at the game to see the kids running around I mean it was what one of the things that mm, sort of I wanted to get interested in with the club again when I spoke to Mike and everything else and, and the, the vision that um, Mike had um, and it's just it's you it just feel so good because there's a rich vein of players just come out of Oldham and just gone to the scattered to the four corners and just for us to have that opportunity as well not just for them but for us to be able to grab those kids and work with them and just achieve something with them I mean that's just fantastic uh, a few other things I'm just conscious of the time on on this I want to I want to rattle through um, potential women's team something we've mentioned what's the what's the plan so, where are we with that at the moment yeah so we've got um a director of women's yeah. in, in Beth Sutcliffe. She's on board. She's uh, having a baby soon. So uh, best wishes, Beth, on that. Um, so the plan is to get a development officer. We've got a grant from Sports England that's gone into our foundation to finance that. Uh, so we're making a plan now that by September up and running, we'll get into schools and clubs. Um, and we'll put a time frame on when we might get a women's team. Um, but at the moment, let's get a development officer, let's work out a plan, let's get into schools and the community club first, but it's very much on our radar. Uh, Melrose, how's it looking? Where's it, where's it heading? What's, what's the idea with Melrose? Um, we're working with people who are, um, let's say, on board with doing things. We're developing Melrose. We've done quite a bit so far to it. We've got a longer term plan with Melrose of putting a facility there for the community in general and just to see as many kids down there and you know it's going to be our sort of pathway and it's going to be it's going to be the future the future you know as much as we want to see super league we've always said we want to see the growth from the ground up at Oldham and Melrose is a massive part of that and we're working on that every day also if you need an expert in demolition I think I could recommend you someone as well um, I don't know any <laughs> <laughs> I think I think just on that yeah. just on that you know, if you asked me and Bill what, what our legacy, what we want our legacy to be, would be Melrose. We want to leave this club where Oldham Rugby have got a facility that they can call home. Nobody else's, it's theirs. And we've not had that for a long, long time. Um, IMG, any way of knowing yet where we are, kind of in the point scoring system that now Rugby League is governed by? Yeah, we, we're on it. We've done an analysis on it. Uh, we know exactly where we need uh, to improve uh, and we're putting plans in place to uh, achieve that. Um, I'm speaking to the Rugby Football League on Friday, uh, having a meeting with Alison O'Brien, who's, who, who's very much the IMG specialist, of, you know, are we on the right track to yeah. do what we're doing, you know? So, again, uh, we're, we're handbraked or and anchored with what's happened over the last three years before we took the club. Uh, we're going to well, certainly, I'm going to ask the question to, to Robert X about uh, potential special dispensation in that, because you know it, this new club and, and Bill's backing is. I think we should be graded from the from the day we took over. Mm -hmm. I think that would be fair. But anyway, that'll be ongoing and something to look out for. Okay, let's uh, let's round off 
back here, and we are back here Sunday. So let's talk about the the game, um, and well, I'll ask you about how you felt during the North Wales away game in the moment because I was monitoring you during commentary as you were pacing up and down the sideline. Yeah. But in terms, first of all, of the match day experience, uh, speaking to all the players as, as I do every day, every week, Bill, at the moment. The message I get all the time is the impact of the fans, that how much that oh. the players buzz off them. Yeah. Obviously, you want bums on seats because it helps the club in, you know, financially. But how how big is it for this place to be bouncing, to be full for this match day experience? How, oh, how key is that? Definitely. I mean, yeah, the, the bums on the seats are one part of it, but the actual, you know, we spoke about this actually, and. You know, we want this to be a fortress. We want it to have our fans. We'd love to see the fans in many more of the stands here. Mm. And the atmosphere for the players, you know, I mean, it's been fantastic. The away support has been tremendous as well. We've got to just say tribute to our fans, you know, with the, the, all the travelling that they do and everything else. But we do need more bums on seats because it helps with the IMG. It helps with absolutely so many things, not just from a financial point of view. So it'd be fantastic for the last six home games to see as many people here as we possibly could you know grab a friend grab somebody someone who's sat in on a Sunday and not really doing anything and never been to a rugby game because I'm sure they'll enjoy it and we've introduced more things to make that game day experience a lot lot better and we'll keep getting that better and we've got better ideas for next season as well and it'll grow and grow it's a great place to to spend um, a Sunday it's you know 20 quid uh, concessions under 16s bring them along uh, for free and, and as Bill says when I, I recall when I started working at the BBC down in London and rugby league was something they'd never heard of there and I started taking colleagues and new friends along to rugby league match never once did I have someone say I didn't enjoy that it was almost like oh my god how have I not seen have I not experienced this before which is exactly the kind of thing we want to we want to bring to you here so like, like Bill says if you've got someone who is staying at yours or a mate bring them along Guarantee you you'll like it. We've got the fan bar open from 12. We've got live music. We've got all kinds of stuff going on in there and some brilliant rugby league on the pitch, which this weekend, Mike, is North Wales Crusaders, who gave us a real scare um, a month or so ago away from home. Yeah, well, the last time they were here, they beat us in the playoff game uh, with a drop goal late on, lost 13-12. I mean, we don't need any really motivation. We, we don't have our hunger and, right and our enthusiasm right, our intent right on Sunday. We'll get beat. We know that. On the other hand, if we get them things right, then you know it could be a good day for us again. Um, just to reiterate what Bill said, the fans are massively important. I would love the last six games. I would love three of them games to break the two two thousand barrier um, to come and share memories together. Hopefully, the great memories to um, be stronger together. You know, I think. You know, if you, if you come down, especially the next few games, you know, North, North Wales Crusaders is going to be a fantastic game. Keithley, the week after, is a showdown to some respect. You know, if we can break the two two thousand pound barrier and do this together, then and and it'd be a fantastic game as well. You know, so we're hoping for uh, the fans to get down. It's a really exciting time to be a fan of Oldham Rugby League. Uh, gents, thank you for sparing your afternoon and coming in. Getting okay. wet under the sprinklers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching that back myself. Um, great to uh, to be able to offer the fans the the update and the insight from uh, from you guys in the boardroom. So really Pleasure. appreciate your time. Um, and I know you've got a busy week, so we'll let you go. But we hope to see you at the end of the week. Keep your eyes on our social media channels. Plenty more uh, bits of news and exclusive content between now and our next match day, which is back here Sunday afternoon. Please join us at a three o'clock kickoff as Oldham take on North Wales Crusaders. We look forward to seeing you there.